In this tutorial, we will learn how to run a Pearson product moment correlation using R. So you should by now have opened up the R Studio program and you should see something that looks like this. So let's go ahead and open up a new file script editor. And specifically, this is your R script file. So do file, new file, and R script. You should see the new window open up. Go ahead and save this as something, your R script file that is. I'm going to save this as into the folder I wish to save it. And I'm just going to save it as test. And this will override an existing file that I already have. Okay, so this, as I mentioned, is correlation in R. So the, what we're going to do initially is make sure that we've set our working directory. And so to do so, let's set our working directory using that setwd function from base R that we can use to set our working directory. And remember, our working directory is where the data file that we wish to read in is located. Now, the data file we wish to read in is in my H drive, R workshop folder. And specifically, we're going to read in a data file that's performance management reward systems example. And this is a CSV file or a comma separated values file. So I'm going to click on this and copy this exact name for later use so we can paste it directly in. But for now, I'm going to set my working directory, which off the top of my head, I know is my H drive, R workshop, and make sure that you've capitalized everything that needs to be capitalized. If there's any spaces, include those. And so I'll now run that line of script and we see that now here in my console window, my working directory is set. Now, alternatively, you could set that by going to session, set new working directory and choose directory. And again, you're gonna set the folder in which the data file you wish to use in this particular session is located. So the next thing we want to do is read in the data. Now there's different ways that we can do this. You could re use the read.csv function from base R, or you could use the read function with a capital R from less R. We're going to use in this example, the read underscore CSV fu uh, function from the reader package. Now, if you haven't already, make sure that you've installed or recently updated the reader package. So that's reader all lowercase without an E. I'm not going to do this because I've recently done it, but instead I'm going to use, or in addition, I'm going to use the library function from base R and type in the name of the reader package because I've already downloaded and installed it before. And I'm going to run that line of script there. So now we can access the read underscore CSV function from the reader package. Now we need to name the data something and specifically the data frame object that we're about to read in. And we'll do so using the left-handed arrow naming tool. So let's go ahead and since this is performance management data, I'm going to arbitrarily call this PM data. And I'll use that left-handed symbol here to name the new data frame object. So we're saying it's name PM data here. And I'll use that read underscore CSV function from the reader package. And I need to now paste in the exact name of the file that's located in my working directory that we wish to read in. So I previously copied that. So here's the exact name. Remember R is case and space sensitive. And then make sure to add in the .csv file extension name here at the very end, but within the quotation marks. So go ahead and click run. And now you should see in your global environment that we have a data frame object called PM data that we've read in. And so here you can see we have a data frame object here with um, 11 variables and 95 observations or cases here. And so we have a unique identifier, employee ID, and then assume anything that begins with perf underscore is a supervisor rated performance evaluation of each individual employee where each individual employee represents a unique row here. So let's assume this is performance quality rated by the supervisor, this is performance uh, productivity rated by the supervisor. This is effort that the person applies towards performing their work. And this is administrative tasks that the, the person performs towards their job as well. Now we also have data for each person on their sales revenue generated or their contributions to the company's sales revenue there, as well as their base pay, variable pay, their sex, age, and education level where one let's say is equal to high school, and then let's say five is equal to some graduate school or a graduate degree, okay? 
All right, so the next thing that we'd like to do is go back and let's practice running a correlation. So we're gonna show, we're gonna do three different approaches to running a correlation and two of which are gonna be from base R, meaning you don't need a special package to access these two first two functions. So let's use the core function from base R first. Now the core function will only give us the sign and the magnitude of the correlation. It won't give us any test of statistical significance. Nonetheless, sometimes it's useful to use. So to use the core function, simply type in COR, all lowercase. And then the next thing that you'll want to do is type the name of the data frame to which the two variables you wish to correlate belong. So ours is PM data, that's what we named it above. And then use the dollar sign to say that the next variable belongs to this data frame. And so let's assume that our hypothesis is that supervisor rated employee productivity is going to be positively correlated with the amount of sales revenue that these salespeople generate. So you would expect probably intuitively that employees who are rated as having higher productivity levels, if they're a salesperson, will also be contributing more sales revenue. So the name of the variable here is perf, perf underscore prod for productivity and make sure you capitalize the P in both perf and prod here. So we can select that here or you could type it in manually. Another way to do this, if you go down to your console or in your R script is just type in PM data as the sole argument in the names function from base R and click return or enter. And you'll see you could copy and paste the exact name of the variable you wish to use. So the next thing we're gonna do is enter a comma to signify that we wanna add a second argument to the core function. And we're going to do PM data, the name of the data frame again, followed by dollar sign and this time since our hypothesis is that productivity is rated by the supervisor is positively correlated with sales revenue, we'll now copy sales revenue in here. And then finally, we wanna tell R that we wish to run a Pearson product moment correlation, okay? Because we have two relatively continuous variables here that we wish to correlate. Now we are extending the definition, shall we say, of of the performance productivity variable here. It only ranges from one to five. It's likely on an ordinal scale, but as is customary, we're going in, in a lot of social sciences and working with human data, we're going to treat this as a continuous variable as opposed to an ordinal variable. Okay, so right here is the third argument. So we added the comma, add the third argument. We're going to say method equals, and then Pearson in lowercase. And this just signifies that we wish to run a Pearson product moment correlation. So make sure you get the case sensitive, case sensitivity right here. Okay, so we could highlight this or put our cursor somewhere on the line of this script, click run, and you'll see that the correlation between the two is 0.56 followed by some other values after the decimal point. So this would be considered just descriptively if we looked at it, well, this is a pretty large correlation, but the question then becomes, is this a statistically significant correlation based on whatever alpha level we're using, which typically alpha we would set to, and I'll make a note here, let's say that alpha is 0.05, and this is a two-tailed, which is a very conventional way of approaching this. So in other words, our p-value, when we do calculate that, needs to be less than 0.05, okay, for it to be considered statistically significant. Anything that is equal to or greater than 0.05 would be considered non-significant. Okay, so how do we actually do a test of significance? Well, we can use a different function from base R that's called core.test. And again, this is from base R. We don't need a special package to use this. And so what we'll do is type core.test. This is all lowercase. And as the arguments, it's the exact same arguments as we used above in the core function. So let's copy that exact script and those three arguments we added there. Paste them into the parentheses. There's the three arguments for the core.test function. And let's run that line of script. Now here at the bottom, you'll see the correlation is exactly the same as we saw above when we use the core function. But now we have the T value for the uh, student's T distribution, which is actually how we would test whether or not that distribution is greater than a particular cutoff and given the degrees of freedom and determine whether or not the test is statistically significant. And here we can see the P value, which is often what we're most interested in focusing on and reporting is equal to 3.466. Now this looks like, wait, can't, a p-value should be between zero and one, right? Well, notice that this is scientific notation here. It's saying e to the negative one, which means that the decimal point is actually moved nine spaces over here. So this is 0 
nine zeros, and then three, four, six, six, and so on. And so this means that this is statistically significant because this p-value is less than 0 0.05, which is our conventional alpha value. Now, um, the next thing that we're going to do is take a look at the 95% confidence interval that's given here. And so the 95% confidence interval indicates that the true or the population correlation, so we're just estimating the correlation based off a sample from the population, that the true population value for the correlation coefficient likely falls somewhere in between 0 0.40, let's say, and 0.68. Okay, so that's actually a pretty good indication that the range is somewhere between medium to large or relatively large or very large in magnitude here. And this is a positive correlation too. So here we conclude that first, there is a statistically significant correlation. And because there is a statistically significant correlation, we can then proceed forward to interpreting the actual magnitude or the effect size of the correlation in terms of practical significance, okay? So we determine, yes, based on statistical significance, that this correlation is significantly different from zero. And then further, because it's statistically significant from zero, how different is it? And we can say that it's a fairly large difference, or this is a large correlation that we're seeing here. And if you remember, we're actually testing the null hypothesis that the correlation is equal to zero. So in this case, by finding a p-value that is less than our alpha value of 0.05, we are rejecting the null hypothesis that the correlation is equal to zero. And here you can see they give us the alternative hypothesis, which is sometimes called the research hypothesis, which is stated in a way that you could say is opposite of the null hypothesis. So this is really what we're truly in interested in understanding here, okay? So here we found support for that hypothesis. Now, we can also use from the lessr package, the correlation function from lessr. Now the correlation function from lessr means that we will need to install and access the lessr package. So if you haven't done this recently, or if you haven't done this at all, install.packages, and then in quotation marks, lessr. I'm not going to run this. I very recently installed lessr, but be sure that you do. There's often frequent updates to this package, um, which may or may not be consequential to whatever you're doing. However, I do recommend updating this any package relatively frequently. Now, I am going to run library function from base R with less R, not in quotation marks. Um, here's the sole argument and click run. And now I've accessed this package here. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to type in correlation, the exact name of the function. It's correlation with a capital C from the less R package. And now, in terms of the script that we're going to, or in terms of the arguments we're going to use, the first thing you want to do is enter the name of the variable, the first variable you wish to correlate. And so the name of the variable is perf, perf underscore prod. As we saw above here, make sure you specify this exactly as named in our data frame. And the second variable, which is our second argument, is sales revenue. Remember, we use a comma to separate each argument. And then finally, use the data equals argument to specify the name of the data frame, which we named PM data. Okay, so these two variables come from the PM data data frame. And now we're ready to run this correlation. So click run. And so here we can see in our output that we have a correlation analysis for variables um, uh, that it actually doesn't list here, but it should say per prod and sales revenue here. Okay, and so here we get our n or our sample size here. So this is the number of paired values with uh, with that don't have any missing values. So complete data in other words. And so we didn't end up dropping any cases which would correspond to employees in this case. Now to calculate the degrees of freedom for this, it would just be n minus two for a Pearson product moment correlation. So the degrees of freedom, if you're interested, would be 93. So here's the sample covariance. This is not a standardized metric, so this is not easily interpretable by itself. Instead, we tend to prefer to look at the correlation coefficient, which is in and of itself an effect size. So the correlation coefficient here is 0.561. So this is just rounded the three digits after the decimal, as opposed to what we saw earlier up here of 0 0.5605, which also rounds to 3 point, or 5.61, or 0.561 rather. 
And here we also see that like the core dot test function from base R, they give us the alternative hypothesis as opposed to the null hypothesis where the alternative hypothesis is the correlation is not equal to zero. But do remember what we're actually testing here is the null hypothesis that the correlation is equal to zero and we're going to either reject it if the p-value is less than 0.05, thereby concluding statistical significance, or we're going to fail to reject it if the p-value is equal to or greater than 0.05, meaning that we won't we don't conclude that we have any evidence that this correlation is any different than zero. And so here what we're interested in is the p-value that's associated with this R value or correlation value. And we see the p-value is 0 0.000. It's not exactly equal to 0 0.00. It's just a very small p-value here. And thus, because it's less than 0.05, we would conclude that this correlation is indeed statistically significant, meaning that we did reject the null hypothesis that the correlation is equal to zero. And here, as we saw with the core dot test function, we get the lower and the upper bounds of the 95% confidence interval. So these are the three ways that you can run a correlation that I'm showing in this tutorial. There's other ways and other functions from other packages you could use to run a correlation. And this is simply to run a correlation that is just a single two variable correlation. You're not running a matrix here, matrix here. Instead, you are just looking at two variables and whether or not they correlate. Thank you very much.